Hey guys, Boy here, and today we will talk about a little secret Nico Baby is using to win all of his LARC games this week. When the new changes to Silver Edge were released, this is what a lot of Dota YouTube channels were showing. Silver Edge LARC, the item that was going to revitalize our fish boy into god status again, and it didn't take long for me to see LARCs going Silver Edge in my pubs in a lot of games with relative success, but if your goal is to get a lot of MMR, you don't want relative success. You want to win every game with the exception of those impossible wins when someone just DCs or breaks items. So what is the secret to Nico Baby then? By the way, before we continue, I'm not saying Silver Edge is a bad item on Slark. I'm saying that even great items can be bad in some games because the hero itself is not that great. Right now, Slark is for me a tier A hero. He is a solid option when the best carries of the patch are banned or already picked, or when the last S tier hero available just doesn't feel great in your game. By the way, if you want to know what in my opinion are the best here as heroes for every position, wait for the ad at the end of the video, but for you to have a taste of what is to come, I made available for free the new Faceless Void PDF that will be added Thursday to my 20 page PDF file, because he is the best carry of the patch, period, at least when it comes to win rate. Anyways, in this game, Slark is against the Faceless Void and I can tell you, Silver Edge is pretty mad versus Void. He has good passives for you to take, but it's not an item that gives you kill potential versus him because he can take your damage through a pounce and he can just wait for Silver Edge and Chrono and explode you. Slark has mediocre armor for an agility hero at least, and he doesn't have an inbuilt bash, meaning it is very hard for him to man up on Void, and he can also get exploded as we talked about. Halberd is the easy solution to a lot of the S tier and A tier carries of the patch. Ursa, Slark, Sven, Void, Terrorblade, to name a few. Because of the Halberd HP and Evasion, he survives a Chronosphere in this game, he will never be able to tank with normal Slark items, and thanks to the increased HP regen effect after his ult, he is strong enough to draw out the fight, man up on a Void that is much stronger than he is at the moment, and the end result is them forcing every ult from Radiant, winning the fight, and rushing. When you think about it, Pretty much every pro gets the strength talent at level 10. They understand how having some HP helps Lark because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much damage you have if you just get exploded and you don't get enough essence stacks to do damage. But against some drafts, especially Void, he just has this ability to just dish so much damage, not only him but everyone else in the team, that Halberd becomes probably the only solution and the Halberd allows you to draw out fights and eventually come on top. It's not an item that you have to get every game, but you know, when you think of heroes like Ursa that gets Basher, Sven that just deals way too much damage for you to fight him, the Halberd just draws out the fight, just makes you find the right time to attack and to then reap the benefits of being a hero that, you know, wants these long draw on fights. This is another game Nico Baby went for the same build, and if you pay attention, this is another game he is relatively far behind in terms of gold. This time against a Mag Jugger draft, the terror of pubs. They take a fight where they are 12k gold behind, by the way. Slark is forced to ult very early against the Witch Doctor ult. And I just want to make a small comparison for you guys to understand. Halberd costs pretty much the same gold to build than it costs to turn an Echo Saber into a Silver Edge. If that was the route Nico Baby went for, he would have 400 less HP, and when he ulted, instead of healing 183 HP a second, he would be healing about 107. So the difference in HP he would have after the ult in both scenarios is about 800 HP. It's pretty easy to see that at the end of this fight, even if he got the Dark Packet off against the Magnus RP like he did in this scenario, he would be dead since his HP is about 400. But because he lives, he now has 30 Essence Shift stacks and they quickly rush and turn this game around as well. Ursa right now, in my opinion, sits in the same tier of carries as Lark. He's good in a lot of games, but not as good as he used to be prior to the nerfs. But regardless of that, the burst damage of Ursa combined with the lockdown of Lion can be really scary for Slark, especially if you're low HP against the Necrophos. 
A solution to these problems is BKB, but not only you can get kited, the item is more expensive than Halberd, the disarm as well as the incredible HP region buff to your ult makes Halberd oftentimes a great mid-game purchase. Watch this fight for instance. Even though Slark gets a great dark pack off dodging both Hex and Earth Spike, the 1.5 second stun of Hookshot hits him as Necro's hands lift into the air. The status resistance here reduces that 1.5 second stun to a 1.2 second stun and that's literally what saves him. In case he did get hit by it, there is even a chance he survives because of the high HP that he has and the higher HP region. The summary of it all is that Slark is a hero that scales by killing people plain and simple. And in this meta, there's a lot of core matchups he struggles to kill with a Silver Edge. Or maybe better said, he struggles to even survive against those heroes. But Halberd is a solution so that you can take fights and scale. Finally, we have another Magja game. And in this clip, Nico Baby was not able to dark pack the RP. But you once again can see how the combination of evasion and high HP just allows you to take fights much easier and snowball. The next replay we will talk about is one game where he did buy Silver Edge, but notice that even in this game after getting Halberd, that's not his priority. Even though Silver Edge is a much better DPS item than before, a lot of times when Slarks are not facing a passive that they have to deal with, they get other items before that, like Abyssal, Scotty, Eggs, Blinkens, BKB, and they only finish Silver Edge when they start to have slot problems, because you can turn that Echo Saber into something. As you also get bigger and late game comes, you can always disassemble your Halberd to use the Talisman of Evasion for a Butterfly and stuff like that. That said, there was one game Nico Bait played against Spectre, and in that case, Halberd obviously makes no sense. There's no burst damage coming from Spectre, and it's not like you're really afraid of the Spectre hits anyways. Silver Edge is a great DPS item now, and the active is obviously amazing versus Spectre, but don't let an item being good dictate how you play Dota. I think a good example of what I'm talking about is PA. Everyone always knew how insane Battle 3 was on her, but for a decent part of last year, almost no one would go for it and instead it would get Desolator, because the game was way too fast for the item to pay off. Midas on Sven is another example of an item that was completely trash and is now popular again because the tempo changed. But tempo is not the only thing to consider in your games. The core matchups are also important. And you know, just for the last time to emphasize how Silver Edge is probably overrated, in this game against the Spectre, he gets Sanji and Yasha and Echo Saber before he builds the Silver Edge. At the end of the day, Sanji just allows you to brawl really well and the increased HP region makes sure that when you out, you don't really have to run away afterwards. You're still gonna be like ready to fight. I actually, I wanna leave, man. I actually can't take how bad everything is. Guys, I'm sorry for interrupting the guide, but I have a really cool update I'm excited to talk about. You ever felt like Arteezy playing a game? Why do I get these players, like, the CM? Look, look, I click on him now and I just look at his items I don't understand. Imagine how he would feel if he also picked bad heroes on top of everything else. I'm here to tell you that besides the 20-minute weekly analysis I'm dropping in my Patreon to help you pick your heroes better during patch 727, I'm also offering a 20-page PDF file that includes what, in my opinion, are the best heroes of the patch for each position, and that PDF is going to be updated weekly. I know there are services that tell you what to pick, but they use global win rates that are usually quite misleading, and they don't account for lanes and roles and very often can cause more harm than good. Oh, just another thing, the PDF files are going to be updated for 727C tomorrow and there will be, alongside the 20-page PDF file, a 20-minute video talking about my impressions of 727C, uh, you know, the power rankings, obviously, most of that's going to be in the PDF file, but I do like to give you a couple of replays to watch in case there is a concept or something that is not actually in the PDFs themselves. It's been really cool to have all of the support of the channel through Patreon and if you know this is something that uh, might interest you, I really urge you guys to check it out. Guys, thank you a lot for watching, commenting and subscribing. These videos take a lot of time, I have to look for a ton of replays. So in case you learned something watching this video, make sure to like, sub, 
hit that bell button and recommend this video for other people so that they can also benefit just as you did. In case you want a more premium experience than my meta analysis, you can hit me on Twitter to get all of the information about my coaching. In case you got back to Dota because of COVID-19 or the compendium, make sure to join our Discord server. We have a very friendly community there and in case you don't like playing pubs by yourself, I'm sure you can find people from all over the world to play with you. If you want to see me play or stream, I actually have some big stream plans coming. Follow me on Twitch. And finally, if you do want to help the channel but the meta guides is not really something you care about, check our other Patreon tiers because maybe one of them interests you. Guys, thank you a lot for watching. Hope you have a green week. Have a good one and bye.